Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Um, Shabbat Shalom. It's so nice to have a, a response. A lot of times I say that into an empty room. I'm Rabbi Leah Berkowitz, and you'll notice I'm up here by myself tonight. Um, uh, Rebecca is away. Uh, she's fine. She's just away. Um, so I'm here by myself, and it was funny because the moment before the service, before I started the service, I was struck by how quiet it is, because <laughs> usually there's some playing going on on guitar and, um, and some mood music, and, uh, and I um, contemplated playing my guitar, but it had been quite a while since I'd done it in anything other than our nursery school, which that's already two years ago. So, um, and also, I just only have so many hands. So, um, so we very much miss Rebecca, and um, it also means I'm going to need a lot of help with singing this evening so that we can get a fuller sound even without the guitar. So we're going to start on page 128. At the top, with Hine Matov. And this is one that we like to do at camp. So how good it is and how pleasant that brothers and sisters dwell together. Hine Matov. Umanaim shaverahim sham yachad. He name mato. Umanaim shaverahim sham yachad. This is a repeat after me part. How good it is. How sweet it is. And together to be together on this day. How good it is. How sweet it is to be together on this day. He name mato umanaim shaverachim gam yachad. He name mato umanaim shaverachim gam wanted to start us off this evening with a poem. Oh, and I see Betty and Bill are here. This is actually from Ritual Well, but it's from our very own Betty Shapiro. It's called, When I Forget, I Am Strong. I am strong, but I forget I am strong, or simply don't feel strong. Help me so that I may experience my strength and be grateful. I am courageous but I forget I am courageous, or I'm unaware of being courageous. Help me be conscious of my courage and be grateful. I'm resilient, but I forget I am resilient, or simply don't feel my resilience. Help me to be mindful of my resiliency and be grateful. Look, I am capable. Look, I am beautiful. Yes, look at me, I am made in the image of God. I reflect God's strength, God's courage, and God resilience. I am strong. I am courageous. I am resilient. I am resilient. I am capable. I am capable despite my challenges. I am filled with gratitude. I am blessed. We take a moment to thank God for our blessings and to draw strength from God and from one another uh, as we welcome Shabbat. So let's take a moment to silently welcome Shabbat. And now let's take a moment to welcome each other. Please turn to someone beside you or behind you and wish them Shabbat Shalom. And this is a special night. Victor Friesen is going to be sharing with us a TED Talk. We're still uh, coming up with our own name for it, so I hope we're not getting any copyright uh, infringement things going on. Um, and that will be at the end of the service. We're going to do the whole service so that, um, so that uh, Victor doesn't feel rushed uh, by being in the middle. And um, we are, and you have already quite a following online. So it's already more people than I said it was going to be. <laughs> um, so it's very exciting to have everybody here today to be able to hear from our congregants their own stories. We are going to continue on page 142. 
Shalom Aleichem, Malachi HaSharei, Malachi HaElyon. Mi Melech, Malachi HaMlachim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Boachem LeShalom, Malachi HaShalom, Malachi HaElyon. Akadosh Baruch Hu, Baruch Hu Nile Shalom, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi Elyon. Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, Akadosh Baruch Hu. Seid Chem Shalom. Malachi HaShalom, Malachi HaElyon. Mi Melech, Malachi HaMlachim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We continue on page 138. Lecha dodi, li krat kala, li krat kala, pene shabbat, ne kabla, ne kabla. Lecha dodi, li krat kala, li krat kala, pene shabbat. Nikabla, Nikabla, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Umevorach, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat. Shalom, umevorach. Lecha dodi, li krat kala, li krat kala, pene shabbat, ne kabla, ne kabla. Lecha dodi, li krat kala, li krat kala. Pene Shabbat, Nikabla, Nikabla, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Umevorach, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom Umevorach. And we continue to go backwards in our prayer book. We're going to page 121, and we invite Rhea Applebaum to bless our Shabbat lights. O source of light and truth, creator of the eternal law of goodness, help us to find knowledge by which to live. Lead us to take the words we shall speak into our hearts and our lives. Bless all who, who enter, enter this sanctuary in need. All who bring the offerings of their hearts. May our worship lead us to acts of kindness, peace, and love. know if you need help. Okay. 
Help me perfect my ways of loving and caring. Inspire me to make myself whole so that I may honor your name and create a world of justice and peace. Page 264. We rise in body and in spirit for the Baruch Hu. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bidbaro Ma'ariv Aravim Bechochma Poteach She'arim Uvitbuna Meshane Itim Umacha Lif Et Hazmanim Umisa Der Et HaKochavim Bemishmero Tehem Barakia Kirtsono Bore Yom Velayla Golel Or Mipne Choshech Bechoshech mipne or. Uma avir yom ume vi laila. Mavdil bein yom ubein laila. Adonai tsevaot shumo. El kai vekayam tamid nimloch alenu leolamva ed. Baruch ata adonai. Hama ariv aravim. In each age we receive and transmit Torah. At each age we are addressed by the world. In each age, we are challenged by our ancient teaching. At each moment, we stand face to face with truth. In each age, we add our wisdom to that which has gone before. At each moment, the knowing heart is filled with wonder. In each age, the children of Torah become its builders and seek to set the world firm on a foundation of truth. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kribot Malchuto Le'olam Vahed You may be seated page 268. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha v'chol levavecha v'chol nafshecha v'chol me'odecha v'hayu hadvarim ha'ela Asher anochi mitzavecha hayom alivavecha v'shinan tam levanecha v'dibar tam v'shivtecha b'veitecha u'glechtecha v'aderech u'shoch becha u'vkumecha. 
Ukshart Hamle Ohot Al Yadecha Vehayulito Tafot Bain Enecha Uchtav Tam Al Mezuzot Betecha Uvisharecha Leman Tiskeru Vasitem Et Komitsotai Vitem Kedoshim Lelohechem Ani Adonai Lohechem Asher Hotsehti Etchem Meeret Mitzrayim Lihiot Lachem Lelohim Ani Adonai Lohechem Adonai Lohechem Emhet. We worship the power that unites the universe, a promise of harmony for all. Yet that oneness eludes our grasp as imperfection and evil abound. Before our eyes, there is a vision of perfection, order, and goodness. There is evil enough to break the heart. There is good enough to exalt the soul. When will redemption come? When we grant everyone what we claim for ourselves. Long ago, we escaped the tyranny of Egypt. Our people saw the power of the Most High. We learned God's presence redeems time and event. So we celebrate this power that makes for freedom. Yai <laughs> Kifadado night Yaakov, Ugalom yad chazak mi menu, Baruch atadonai, Gaal Yisrael. Give us a place to rest, O God. Shelter us in the long, soft evening shadows of your truth. You are true protection and safety. In your presence, we find love and acceptance. Watch over us as we go forth. Prepare for us as we return. Spread over us your shelter of peace over all we love, over our Jerusalem and yours. Baruch Ata Adonai, Apore Sukkot Shalom Aleinu, Ve'al Kol Amo Yisrael, Ve'al Yerushalayim. Shamru Vene Israel Et HaShabbat La'asot Et HaShabbat Le'dorotam Berit Olam Veshamru Vene Israel Et HaShabbat La'asot Et HaShabbat Ledoratam berit olam. Beni uvein, bene Yisrael, bene Yisrael, oti leolam. Veshamru, bene Yisrael, et hashabat. Laasot et hashabat ledoratam berit olam ki sheshad yamim asadonai asadonai et ha 
Page 273, we rise in body and in spirit for the tefillah. <coughs> Adonai sifatai tiptach ufi agi tehilat elcha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Velohei avoteinu v'imoteinu, Elohe Avraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Velohei Yaakov, Elohei Sarah, Elohei Rivka, Elohei Rachel, Velohei Leah. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibur v'hanora el el yon gomel chasadim tovim v'kone ha'kol v'zocher chaste avot v'imahot u'mevi ke'ula livne v'neham l'ma'an shemo v'ahavam Melech Ozer Umoshia Umagain Baruch Atah Adonai Magain Avraham Bezrat Sarah Atagi Bor Leolam Adonai Mechaye Hakol Atarav Lehoshia Morid Hatal Mechalkel Chaim Bechesed Mechaye hakol berachamim rabim. So mech nochlim berofe holim. Umati rasurim. Umekayem emunato li shene afar. Micha mocha baal gehurot. Umido melach. Melech Nemit, Umechaye, Umas Miach Yeshua, Beneman Atala Chayot Hakol, Baruch Atah Adonai, Mechaye Hakol, Ata Kadosh, Beshim Chakadosh, Mekudoshim Bechol Yomi Hallelujah Hasela. Baruch atah Adonai ha'el ha'kadosh. You may be seated. Another quick reminder that while I have had a cold for three weeks, it is not COVID, but thank you for your concern. Um, there's a whole conversation in the Talmud about um, uh, when you can, at what points in the service you can interrupt your prayers and under what circumstances. And I always think about that when somebody sneezes while we're doing the Amidah. Because a, a lot of it's either like, you know, if you want to, uh, can you stop to like ask somebody how they're doing or can, you, or can you stop if you feel that there's something dangerous happening. And I always feel like, you know, uh, saying bless you when somebody sneezes is a, is, a, is a courtesy. So we should be able to interrupt some of our prayers for that. So thank you. Um, when I am on my own musically, I like to do this melody for our Mekadesh HaShabbat uh, from when I lived in New York and went to a lot of all sorts of minyanim, 
Uh, so uh, I, I, I think I will do that tonight. It's on the bottom of page 277. Eloheinu, Eloheavotenu, Imotenu, Ritzei, Binuchatenu, Kachenu, Bimitzvotecha, Vitein Chalkenu, Bitoratecha, Sahavenu, Yitzuvecha, Vesamchenu, Vishuatecha, Vitaher libenu, Lehav de Chabe Emet, Behan Pileenu, Adonai Eloheinu, Beahava of Ratzon, Shabbat Kodshecha. Vianuchu va Yisrael, Mekadesh Shemecha. Baruch atah Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat. Be gracious, Adonai, our God, to your people Israel, and receive our prayers with love. O oh, may our worship always be acceptable to you. Fill us with the knowledge that you are near to all who seek you in truth. Let our eyes behold your presence in our midst and in the midst of our people in Zion. Blessed is Adonai, whose presence renews Zion. For the good in us which calls us to a better life, we give thanks. For the strength to improve the world with our hearts and our hands, we offer praise. For the desire in us which leads us to work for peace, we are grateful. For life and nature, for harmony and beauty, for the hope of tomorrow, all praise to the source of being. For all these things, O Sovereign, let your name be forever praised and blessed. O God, our Redeemer and Helper, let all who live affirm you and praise your name in truth. Blessed are you, Adonai, your name is goodness, and you are worthy of thanksgiving. Baruch Ata Adonai. Hatov Shimcha Ulecha Nae Lehodot. Shalom Rahava Yisrael Amcha Tasim Leolam. Shalom Rahava Yisrael Amcha Tasim Leolam. Ki Hatahu Melech Adon Lechol HaShalom Ki Hatahu Melech Adon Lechol HaShalom Shalom Rav Al Yisrael Amcha Tasim Leolam Shalom Rav O Yisrael Amcha, Tassim Leolam. Vitov Be'enecha Levarech, Et Amcha Yisrael. Bechol Eid Uvechol Shah, Bishlomecha. Shalom Rav, O Yisrael Amcha, Tassim Leolam. Shalom Rav, O Yisrael Amcha, Tassim Leolam. Tassim Leolam. Tassim Leolam. Please take a moment for silent prayer.
pause in the heart of our service for a prayer for those in our community and beyond our community who are ill. If there's a name you'd like to share for a blessing of healing, you can say it in the room or share it in the chat. Meryl Germankin, Amy Goldberg Alberts, John Sherman, Isaac Katz, Sheila Sadaloff, Lauren Green, Frank Russo, and Aviva Kay. We are also thinking of David Katz, David Harrison, Barry Cohen, Joe Crinty, Rita Siegel, Stephen Witt, Jerry Klebanoff, Bill England, Jenna Meyer, Victor Friesen, Max Henry Shapiro, Robin Shane, and Randy Kahn. We are also add to that list Andrea Dukes. We are on the top of page 371. We join together in a prayer of healing. And just as we share life's challenges, we also share life's joys. If there is something you'd like to share, a birthday, an anniversary, an achievement, or just a, a small joy, no joy is too small, you can put it in the chat, you can unmute, or you can share in the room. Yes, Rhea. Oh, that would that, yes, that would be really nice. I'm sure he's getting a lot of mishaberas. He's got a lot of Jewish friends. Yes. So, um, and I'm actually checking to see. That's actually Rachel Ezekiel Fishbein. I want to shout her out. She's doing an amazing, amazing job, and all as a volunteer. So she is she is a rock star in that department. Um, so yes, and I want to shout out Ria who last week filled in for me, or not filled in for me, you led uh, your first of our Torah with us at, um, uh, at one of our lay-led services, and I got to watch it on video, and it was wonderful. And um, I know that, I think you've done that before in other communities, but I was glad to see you uh, bringing your talents here. So wonderful, thank you. Um, uh, oh, and Betty and Bill say, I came in a little late for the service, and to my surprise, Rabbi Berkowitz was reading my prayer. I'm humbled and appreciative. It sounded beautiful in the sanctuary. Yes, and we are um, so grateful to you for all that you bring to our community. Uh, I know you have big news. Yeah. Uh, so I have to be my first granddaughter. First granddaughter. So Michael has a new granddaughter. And, and what is her name? Eveline Lily. El Eveline Lily. May she grow to be strong and wise and kind. Mazel tov. What else? Yeah, you actually can't, so I... <laughs> 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 
No, it's, it's like grandbaby, grandbaby beats everything. It's even actually, I think having a kid, grandbaby beats everything. So, um, okay, wonderful. So we are grateful for all of that. As I said, we're going to have Victor speak at the end of the service, so we're actually going to continue with Alenu on page 586. We will rise in body and in spirit. Let me find this page. I also just want to acknowledge that somebody fixed the squeaky door. I think it was Justin Crick. And so I know that all of you who have been tolerating the squeaky door, um, it's something to celebrate. No joy is too small. <laughs> Alenu le shabe achla don hako, la tait gadula leotzer breishi, shelo asanet go ye harat sot, velo samanu, kmishpachot adama, shelo sam chilkenu kahem, the go ralenu, the hohamonam. Vanahnu korim, Mishaharim, Umodim, Lifne Melech, Malche Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruchu, Shehuno Teshamayim, Beoset Aharetz, Umoshav Yikaro, Bashamayim, Mimel, Ushin Atuzo, Ushin Atuzo. Begave meromim, hu aloheinu einod, em et malkeinu efes zulato, kakatu betorato, viadata hayom, viadata hayom vehashevota, elevavecha, ki adonai. Uhaelonim Bashamayim Mimao Beau Haret Beau Haret Mifahad Enod Enod. May we gain wisdom in our lives, overflowing like a river with understanding. Loved each of us for the peace we bring to others. May our deeds exceed our speech. And may we never lift up our hands but to conquer fear and doubt and despair. Rise up like the sun, O God, over all humanity. Cause light to go forth over all the lands between the seas. And light up the universe with the joy of wholeness, of freedom, and of peace. Ayom hahu ya Adonai echad Ushemo, Ushemo, Ushemo echad You may be seated. Page 595. There are stars up above, so far away. We only see their light long, long after the star itself is gone. And so it is with the people that we loved. Their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us as we live our days these are the ways we remember. This week we mourn the recent passings of Stephen B. Harris, husband of Deborah Harris and father of Eric and Michael. Alan Jacobs, father of Eve Jacobs. Joni Wolf, cousin of Eve Jacobs. We are also observing the art sites of Joe Bernhardt, uncle of Rachel Ezekiel Fishbein, Barbara Kaplan, mother of Mark Kaplan, Clarissa Z. Popkin, mother-in-law of Susan Popkin, Gertrude Mary Pratt, mother of Janine Pratt, 
Dr. Sum Sumner Rotman, uncle of Ellen Horowitz Matz, Nina Sundheim, cousin of Ellen Friedman, Philip Warsaw, father of Jeffrey Warsaw, and Lester Weiss, grandfather of Michael Levin. If there's a name you'd like to add to this list, please do so now. Do we have any names in the chat? Or if people need to unmute. Kaddish can be found on page 598. We rise in body and in spirit. Gadal vi Gadash Shemei Rabbah, Be'alma divara chirute v'yamlich malchute, V'chaye chon v'yome chon, U'v'chaye d'chol be'it Yisrael, Ba'agala v'zman kari v'imru amen. Yehe Shemei Rabbah mevarach le'olam u'almei amaya, Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitramam v'yitnaseh, Viet Adar, Viet Ale, Viet Alal, Shemay de Kudsha, Brihu. Le Ela mean Kol, Birchata, Vashirata. Tushbechata, Venechamata. Daami ran, Bealma, Vimru, Amen. Yehe, Shlama, Rabba, mean Shemaya. Vehaim, Alenu, Vel, Kol, Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. O se shalom, Bimramav. Huya, a se shalom. Alenu, Vel, Kol, Yisrael. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved. And let us say, Amen. Amen. seated. Our Shabbat Kiddush can be found on page 123. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei peri hagafen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam a share kitchen of a mitzvot of the rats of a new to Shabbat good show the hava who rats on in Hilanu Zikaron the Mahase Vereshi Ki who yom to Hila the Mikra e Kodesh. Zecher litzihad mitzrayim. Kibanu v'acharta ve'otanu kidashta mikol hamim v'shabat kodshecha be'ahava Uvratzon kinchaltanu Baruch Ata Adonai Mekadesh Hashabbat L'chaim Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz v'tei avon. Okay. Let's do Mayafeh Hayom. I think that's nice and simple. 
Baruch Hatem Bivoechem, Baruch Hatem Betzeitchem. Blessed were you when you came into the house of God, and blessed may you be as you go forth. God, we are so blessed to be together. We are so blessed to be in each other's presence, both virtually and in person. And we are blessed to be able to draw strength from one another and provide healing to one another and to soothe each other's spirits in these difficult times. Help us to be strong and wise and kind and to make our world better. And let us say, Amen. Yair Adonai Pana Vilacha. No, I did it wrong. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Yair Adonai Pana Vilacha Vichunacha. Yisa Adonai Pana Vilacha Vyasim. Lecha Shalom. And I want to wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom. I had to make a couple of errors because I wanted to show you how much we need Rebecca. Um, <laughs> um, in a moment, I'm going to invite Victor to speak to us in one of our congregational TED Talks. Um, I did want to just say uh, a few uh, announcements. Uh, next week, we are going to be virtual um, because as we pointed out, Rebecca and I each only have two hands, so when she's leaving without me, she has to play guitar and run the computer, and it's just too much with all the stuff going on here. So next week will be online. And also, we are back to Oneg. So if you are here in person, there are some prepackaged cookies and, and some water. And uh, you are welcome to either, if you're comfortable sitting at a table unmasked, you are welcome to take your mask off to, to eat with us. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, you're welcome to take your, your Oneg to go. That's why it's wrapped. So don't feel like that's not rude. You can absolutely do that. OK. Um, so I just want to thank, uh, before we even get started, want to thank, um, um, actually, I want to remember to hit record. One second. <laughs> OK. So we are about to have our second congregational TED Talk. And this is the brainchild of Linda George and our membership committee. And um, which is uh, newly reconstituted and seeking more enthusiastic people, and they have lots of really incredible ideas. And one of them was, it would be really nice if, in addition to learning Torah and hearing from me, um, that we could get to know each other better. And we have congregants with very interesting lives, and we actually had a car uh, one of our little schmoozes this week, and I learned some things I didn't know about uh, people in our community. So we want to make sure that everybody has those opportunities at various times. And uh, we wanted to invite Victor Friesen to share with us some experiences from his life. He's had a, pr uh, he's had a very interesting life, I think, uh, the whole life. And I hope it continues to be interesting, but in a good way. Um, <laughs> and the last two years especially, I know that you've been through quite a lot. So um, you are uh, welcome to come up here and share with us your experiences. Thank you so much. Let's make sure you're comfortable. Is this okay? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, I'll try not to talk. Okay. Thank you. Okay, can everybody hear online? Wave or, or ask them if they can hear you online. Can you hear me online? Good, all right, awesome. There's some people out there. That's wonderful. Yeah, got a good turnout. <laughs> I'd like to thank Kolomi, our Rabbi Leah Berkowitz, Linda George, and all of you here and online for the chance to present this review of my recent life and my thoughts about it. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our rabbi, our administrative director, Elaine Stevens, 
and all the people who pitched in and worked so hard to relocate our synagogue to this wonderful setting when the need arose. It was a task fit for the Torah in so many ways we'll never know. And I'm extremely grateful to have our synagogue and congregation here for us through these very stressful times. Put simply, Judaism is the very foundation of our lives and we need it every day. On a more personal note, I'd like to thank everyone for the opportunity to reflect on my experiences over the past two years and reach a better understanding of what this has meant to me in my life. I call this simply grateful. I was born and raised in Western Ontario, Canada in a totally white Anglo-Saxon culture. I started out vaguely Protestant, then atheist in college like so many at the time, and then later agnostic, more or less by default. God was an idea and belief I simply couldn't accept in the way these were presented. I married a Jewish woman from a foreign country called America and moved there to live and work. And after a number of years, married again to another Jewish woman who was determined that our children should be raised Jewish. I helped her a lot in this, finally seeing our girls graduate from Colony and head for college. Only that wasn't the end of it. I stayed with Kolomi and finally chose to convert to Judaism. It filled the need for a bedrock I could live with and embrace and which could live with me in so many ways that matter. Judaism is the oldest and most life-affirming communal identity on earth. It doesn't demand a set belief in God. It doesn't even demand a belief in God at all as it's always been a communal identity first, going back over thousands of years. It gives us a lot to consider about life and God, but it's up to each of us to make these choices. It does demand an identity as Jewish and a way of life and values built from its history and folklore and tradition. And after this, it's up to each of us. For myself, God is both a symbol and an ideal with enormous meaning and responsibility and a model I strive to live up to and to deserve by doing so. I'm nowhere near being a scholar of Judaism. I do try to take part in the holidays and celebrations, which I respect gratefully, but they are anchored to me in the past and the traditions I need. Without them, I'm like so many in all races and cultures, lost and quite alone. On June 13th, 2020, on a beautiful bright spring day in Philadelphia, around noon, I was hit by a car while on my bicycle in the bike lane of North Broad Street. I have no memory of this or that day at all. My helmet was split open and I was knocked unconscious for two days. And among other things, my left ankle was shattered. Then, about two years later, on March 18th, 2022, while at a gym, my heart suddenly went into cardiac arrest and stopped dead for about two minutes. I blacked out completely and regained consciousness at Abington Hospital. In both of these incidents, I was extremely fortunate to survive at all, and even more fortunate by far, to be able to walk out of these hospitals, able to see and hear and understand others, and find my own way around the units, and feed myself, and thank all the great police officers and gym staff, and doctors and caregivers who saved my life, not once, but twice. They saved me and nursed me back to health, allowing me to eventually leave and return to my family and friends and the whole world outside. I knew it wasn't waiting for me, but I thanked it for still being there for me as real and not just a blurred shadow or memory. 
My memory and awareness deserve a note in all this. It certainly wasn't like television or movies or the books. I remember nothing at all of the entire day of my bike accident or for about a week afterward. I was in a coma for two days and then woke up and was alert and aware and verbally responsive for about five days. But I have absolutely no memory of this. That part of my brain was switched off while the rest worked effectively. <clears throat> Sorry. The next thing I can remember is that I'm at talking to a nurse, something about lunch, and I'm looking around and wondering, where am I and how did I get here? And then I notice I'm in a wheelchair and I have a cast on my lower left leg and bandages all over me, including my left forehead. Although I had been there for a week and alert and verbal and apparently quite pleasant for five days, this was the first I was actually aware of it as conscious. I had no memory of the day of the accident or regaining consciousness, although my daughters later told me that when I woke up, was quite, I was quite cheerful and very talkative. So what was this all about? I have no real idea, except to perhaps idealize it as an innate, self-protective way to separate myself from the experience until I was ready for it, and why not? It sounds much more interesting than calling it temporary amnesia from a head injury. Two years later, my heart suddenly went into cardiac arrest and I simply passed out and fell over. I have some vague impressions of being in an ambulance and then the ER and then in a room with all kinds of wires and tubes in me and thinking something like, well, <laughs> this looks familiar. I later learned that cardiac arrest is generally a death sentence, or worse. Most people simply die where they are, or if they do get a heartbeat back, it's too late for their brains. I was incredibly fortunate because it happened at a gym and I was thinking I'd done enough reps and then nothing. No sudden pain, no gasping for breath, no clutching my chest just out. The staff at the gym literally saved my life. They jump-started my heart with the paddles, just the way they'd learned in training, and kept me breathing until the ambulance got there and the EMTs took over. I now have a cardiac bypass for four of my major arteries and a handy pacemaker and defibrillator in my upper chest that quietly decides whether I need a good jolt to get back to life. That's interesting. I tap it once in a while to ask it how it's doing. No answer yet, but it's very reassuring that it's there. A few things are worth adding here, and I've thought about all this a lot, because when you brush up so closely with death, you need to look at what this means to your life and how you're living it. I thought about what so commonly could have happened. Unlike so many, I wasn't crippled and brain damaged. I wasn't paralyzed. I wasn't run over by the car and killed. And when my heart gave out, I didn't fall off the trail or in the house and quietly die. What I've taken to heart, so to speak, are three main lessons or insights, if you will. The first, is that I and everybody else can't be biking on roads anymore. There are too many phones, calls to make and answer, messages, directions, internet searches. There's no end to it. The guy who hit me was 22 years old. He was on his phone when he decided to swerve into my bike lane and from the description, knocked me up off my bike into his windshield and then jammed on his brakes and tossed me forward onto the road. He had no driver's license and no insurance coverage. It was his parents' car, and I spent the next two years helping my attorneys fight it out with their insurance company. In the meantime, 
I have about half a pound of stainless steel holding my left ankle together, a chronic but dull lower left back and leg pain, and an interesting scar on my left forehead with some signs of slight memory loss. I'm not complaining about any of this really because the alternatives were devastating. The second main insight I learned, and this was early in my first incident, is gratefulness. When I was hit by the car and finally got my memory back, I was furious and sorry for myself. I was a victim through no fault of my own. And then I looked around and there were three other guys there who would never get themselves out of their wheelchairs. My roommate was a man in his 30s who was paralyzed from the chest down. His head was badly injured and his speech was very slurred. He had two children. From that day, I stopped feeling sorry for myself and moved into appreciating what I still had. I could recover and walk again and feed myself and go to the bathroom and talk to my family and friends and listen to music and drive a car and countless other things I'd taken for granted for so long. I thought about what it'd be like if I were in the same boat as the guys I'd seen, paralyzed and helpless and completely dependent on care, what would I do? This would be my life in an institution at Rhodes End. So I thought, well, I'll just opt out, take care of my will, pay for the funeral, say goodbye to my family and close friends, and take that stuff that puts you to sleep and switches you off. And the vast majority of people who say this don't do it. And I have no real idea that I would if it came to this. None of us do until it comes. Along with being grateful, I learned to really appreciate the new medical care by way of the past. What I should have been paying much more attention to is my own history. We all tend to neglect this or minimize it. My own father died of a heart attack when he was 48 and I was 18. He died in the middle of the night when the rest of us were all asleep. His own father had also died of a heart attack in his 40s. They both smoked and drank. This was their generations. My father was in World War II in the Air Force and got three free packs of cigarettes a week. I never smoked and drank only wine and controlled my weight and exercised regularly. What did I know? Turns out a lot of it's in the genetics. I beat the odds by about 25 years, but what happened to me was more or less built in. It was just a matter of time for me. My main heart arteries were 90% blocked, and on March 18th, I just went out. If you're paying attention, Family history is often not just important, but critical. The third insight I had, and this is difficult to describe in its impact on me, is that I see the world and my life in it differently. I can say that it's not a drastic, life-changing, 100% different change. Again, that's for the movies and not real life. I'm the same person but I do see myself as a better, more appreciative version of myself in many ways. A main heading for this is that I feel myself to be more attentive and thoughtful and no other word for it but grateful. Grateful? Yes, grateful. I have more attention and care for the world. I notice things more about my environment, about others, about my own life. It matters more as if it's all being highlighted in deeper colors or a clearer sound, if I can describe it like that. My family matters more. My daughters, Lizzie and Alicia, and my son-in-law, Dan, who's a wonderful partner and father to my terrific grandkids, Calix and Delphi. I'm more appreciative of my girl's mother, Holly, and more aware of her contributions to them which are wonderfully caring and clear-eyed. My own family matters more, 
my sister Maureen and brother Murray. They've been with me all my life through some very tough times. I'm very grateful to my special friend Judy, whose presence and support have helped me enormously in getting through these past two years. I feel immensely grateful for my daughters and their busy, productive lives and take some pride in this and worry about them because that's part of it all. I feel that I matter to all of them and this is a priceless gift. I also notice other people more, even complete strangers, and actually look at them closely to see a bit of who they really are and how they're doing with their lives. I can even say that I try to engage people more because I really want to know how they're doing and what they're thinking about things. My brother calls me every day from London, Ontario, Canada. He's going on three years sobriety from alcohol. He works part-time, saves his money, and has morning coffees with his friends and sponsor. He checks in as much to let me know he's still sober and okay as to make sure I'm still here with him and he still has a place with his family. It means a lot to him, and I welcome his calls. I think a lot about my work in psychotherapy and how it's been over two years since I was in practice and whether I still have what it takes to do the work. Things like memory and recall, insight, meaning, relevance, and guidance that can actually make a difference. I think about my work in criminal forensics. It's a lot, and I don't know. It means a great deal to me, so I'll just have to live it out and see. I've also noticed that I listen to birds more and their different calls to each other. I watch a lot of them when they swoop in for seeds and water at the feeders. I notice bugs too, spiders, flies, ants, ladybugs. They're all busy with their missions and for the most part they pay no attention to each other or me fascinating. I noticed that I tried to step avo avoid stepping on them now. Imagine, bugs. So what does any of all of this have to do with being Jewish and in synagogue on Shabbat, in our country of America, in our world? How does all of this tie together? Because isn't that the main idea for a talk during a Shabbat service? Twice in two years I've had near-death experiences. I survived. I'm still here on earth, alive, and mostly intact. I was fortunate beyond all the odds. But that's it. Fairness, however you want to define it, had absolutely nothing to do with it. Our lives on earth have nothing to do with something called fairness. And yet most of us live our lives every day as if they do. Why? because quite simply it matters to ourselves, our families, others, and the world around us. Our lives are better, easier, and much longer than even 70 years ago. But our psychology is much the same as it's been since Homo sapiens first evolved. By genetics and an extra brain and luck and sheer perseverance, we got first place for whatever it's proven to be worth. We won the global lottery. Now we need more than ever to really earn it. Life itself means a great deal more to me now than it ever used to. For myself, Judaism is a foundation and commitment and identity to make a difference that really matters. Thank you. I want to say thank you to Victor, and um, I want to see, I think we'll have an opportunity to talk to Victor at our, at our own egg, but I wanted to see if any of our folks online um, wanted to ask any questions. You're getting lots of yasher koachs and, uh, and wows. Okay, well, I want to wish our, um, if we're getting more thank yous, 
Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording. Oh, and uh, oh, we did actually. I'm not going to stop the recording because somebody did ask, um, what uh, what advice would you give to us who are listening tonight? Um, sure. Yeah. I don't think I can pass on some worthy words of wisdom, so I'll just say what I think about it. I think we should all be grateful. We should be grateful for our lives. We should be grateful for what we're doing and how we're doing it and how we're living with our families and our friends and others. That's about as much as I hope for at this point. Life itself is a huge puzzle, a huge conundrum, mm -hmm. and it has many back turns. I was just living through two of them, and I came out the other side, and I was incredibly fortunate, and I saw a lot of others who weren't, and every day it happens. Thank you. Yes, I think gratitude is a, is a, is a great thing, and I think we're grateful that we got the opportunity to hear that story and to learn from one another. So I want to say Shabbat Shalom to our friends on YouTube.